is Nuara and I'm a project uh, manager for the marketing team at Printful. Um, I've been part of the Printful team for about five years now. Um, I've been working on all sorts of projects over this time and for the past couple of months I've been a part of the um, you know our COVID-19 communications response team um, and that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. So uh, we're living through some unprecedented times and it can be scary for business owners to, to figure out how to navigate that and how to address your customers during this time and it has definitely been also a learning experience for Printful. So I'm going to share with you guys today five main lessons um, that we've learned over the course of, of COVID-19 and how we've communicated. So um, diving in, uh, coming up first is don't be afraid to over communicate. Uh, you know, we're living through some scary times right now. So you can use communication as a way to kind of create a sense of security for your customers. Uh, let them know that you're still open for business, give them any updates that they should know. Um, and generally during times of crisis, it's better to, to over communicate than to under communicate. So um, the way Printful, how we came upon this lesson is that um, early on during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, you know, maybe early March when we started to feel the impact and we were starting to figure out what to do about it, um, um, we decided that we did not want to send a lot of emails in the very beginning because things were changing every day and we didn't want to spam our customers with daily updates. So instead, we decided that our strategy would be to publish a public FAQ page and then rely heavily on our internal channels to share that with our customers. So we posted it throughout um, the Printful dashboard. We shared it on social media in our Facebook group, um, Printful Insiders. Um, and every time there was a new post, then we would share it, you know, mostly internally. Um, so after a few weeks had gone by and things were starting to become a little bit more, you know, clear and more stable, what was happening, um, we still noticed that we had a lot of the same trending customer questions. So at that moment, we thought, okay, you know, maybe now would be a good time to send, a, you know, a bigger, a more mass kind of um, update email to explain the current situation and what was going on. So um, we did that. Uh, here's a, a little bit of that email we sent. Um, basically, we talked about uh, what our customers should expect. We addressed fulfillment times, how they were longer. We talked about what we were doing at our fulfillment centers, um, how we were sh handling shelter in place laws, um, the social distancing measures we were implementing, and what we were doing to tackle some of the challenges that we were seeing. Um, and the, the feedback we got from customers was generally very positive. Um, a lot of our customers reached out and they were glad that we had emailed them. Um, they were surprised that they didn't receive more emails from us. Um, and others even wrote that they weren't aware of some of the information that was in that email, even though it was publicly available on our site at the time. So um, while I do think it was the right call to, you know, maybe go easy on the emails in the beginning, um, you know, I do think this was a learning opportunity for us. Um, and we understood that, okay, like we probably could have communicated, um, you know, sent this email a little bit sooner than we did. Um, so, um, you know, communicate with your customers, tell them what's going on, assure them that, you know, things are still happening with your business. So you can communicate, you know, via email, um, whether it's sending out a dedicated campaign with a bigger update, um, or if you're sending out other, you know, newsletters, maybe transactional emails, um, then you can include, um, and I'm going back to the last slide, um, but you can see we have a blue banner at the top of that email. Um, that's a banner that we include in almost all of our emails so that whatever we send, um, customers do get access to our COVID-19 info page. So that's something you can also um, you know, include in some of your transactional or newsletter emails. Um, communicate any updates on social media, wherever your, your you know, audience is most engaged, wherever you're most present. Um, you can also pin posts on some of your social media profiles so that information is always there for your customers to access. Um, and then you can also communicate a little bit more passively on your storefront, um, you know, so customers have information as they're going through your store on their buyer journey. So you can publish some kind of a disclaimer or information on specific product pages that are maybe more popular um, and they're taking longer to fulfill. Um, if you have any FAQs, policy pages, shipping pages, um, you should take a look at, you know, whether you need to edit or add anything there. Um, and you can add just a banner as well at the top of your page or a pop up or something things so that as soon as customers land on your store already they can see um, a place where they can find info um, if they're curious as to what is going on with your business in COVID-19 or any crisis. So uh, quickly before I move on, here's another example um, of what we did at Printful. 
Um, so this is our all over print neck gaiter, which is one of our most popular products right now, as Elena mentioned earlier. Um, and you can see on the bottom right hand corner, we added, um, you know, a disclaimer that because this is a popular product, uh, fulfillment times are taking longer than we'd like. And it's just a good place to already inform our customers here in case this is the first place they interact with the product that already we're setting their expectations. So, um, you know, you want to communicate with your customers, communicate off and keep them in the loop um, and make sure you share information in whatever channels um, is easier for them and wherever they're expecting to hear from you. You wanna meet them halfway um, where they expect to hear from you. Um, at the same time though, you do wanna make sure that your message has value. So um, I don't know about you guys, but during March, I received dozens and dozens of emails from pretty much every company I have ever interacted with about what they're doing in response to COVID-19. And to be honest, not a lot of it was super useful um, or valuable to me. Um, so that's something um, that you wanna do that just because you know you can communicate often with your customers, doesn't mean you should if you don't have something you know important and valuable to share with them that they need to know um, and generally you know it's just good advice that whenever you produce content it should be valuable to your customers but especially during times of crisis you want to make sure that you're sharing information that your customers need so then you can think of um, some common question questions that your customers might be wondering like um, do you have any products that are out of stock uh, when will I get my order are shipping delays expected how is COVID-19 affecting your store? How can I get in touch with you? Um, these are just a handful of questions that, you know, customers might be wondering, but, you know, think proactively. Um, what do your customers need to, to feel safe buying from you? What are some things that, that would be useful for them to know right now? Um, you know, be transparent and share that with your customers. Um, and that's also, um, you know, why we didn't want to send too many emails in the very beginning of this crisis is because, you know, everybody was sending things and we were worried that our message would get lost in the void. So, you know, we waited a little bit until we had something substantial to say. Um, so another example of what we did, um, we realized that we were publishing a lot of content that was helpful for our customers and informative for our customers. Um, but our customers are also business owners and they're probably getting a lot of the same questions that we are. So we decided to publish a blog post that covers, you know, advice for our customers about what to communicate, where to communicate, um, you know, resources that are available to small business owners um, as a way to kind of elevate that and to provide value for our customers that they, they can then pass on even further um, to their customers. So um, communicate, keep your customers in the loop, um, make sure your message has value, be informative, um, factual, but you also want to still you know, be human and keep that human aspect. Um, during crises, you know, we get through them together. You know, when people connect, we're stronger together. Um, so don't be afraid to, to show that in your messaging as well. You know, show the person behind the brand. Um, you know, that's something that you might have as an advantage over some of the bigger kind of brands in the bigger big box retail stores um, because you're a small business and you can share more about yourself and more about your story. And you can give a little bit of a, of a personal touch um, in communicating with your customers. You can let them know that you appreciate their business um, because at the end of the day, you are also a person. You're a person behind that brand running your business and you're doing your best to, to keep things running and to keep orders going out and to keep your customers happy. Um, generally, especially now, um, you know, during COVID-19, people are a little bit more patient than usual because um, COVID-19 is affecting every aspect of life um, and industry-wide, you know, across e-commerce and retail, everything is slowing down. So people kind of understand that this is just the way things are right now. Um, but even so, um, you know, it's nice to, to remind people that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm still here, I'm a person um, and I'm trying. Um, so how we're doing that at Printful, um, we're sharing some behind the scene photos of, you know, our teams at the Fulfillment Center. Um, we're also being very transparent and honest with our customers about what's going on internally at Printful. So, um, you know, we've communicated about our office staff, you know, we're all working from home. I'm working at home, obviously. Uh, we've been implementing social distancing measures at all of our fulfillment centers. Um, you know, we're giving out uh, protective equipment, staggering shifts, um, you know, work is voluntary. Um, for fulfillment staff. Um, so we're being transparent about how we're dealing with it and how our team is dealing with it um, because we are working very hard on overcoming a lot of challenges that we're seeing. Um, and, you know, print fillers, uh, we care very deeply about our customers and about doing our best for our customers um, so they can, you know, support their businesses. 
So um, communicate often, communicate valuable, important information while also, you know, stay genuine, stay human um, while you talk to your customers during these times of crisis. Um, and while you're doing all of this, it's also important that you stay current and, and be flexible because things change often. They change every day. Um, so you have to make sure that you're keeping track of what's going on and then um, figure out whether or not you need to adapt and change anything. So, um, you know, make sure that you follow the news. Um, you can keep in contact with any partners and suppliers that you work with. Um, you know, like Printful, we have our, our FAQ page. Um, and then, you know, based on information that you're getting, take a look at what you need to change on your store. Um, you know, any campaigns that you need to adjust, um, check over your messaging and what you're communicating and make sure it's all still current and up to date and make sure that the way you're communicating also still makes sense. Um, and this can be pretty overwhelming to do, you know, it's easy to stress out and, you know, every day read the news and try to remember everything that you need to do. So try to make it easier for yourself. Um, you know, we recommend, um, you know, kind of making this part of your routine and scheduling maybe a couple days a week um, and creating a list for yourself um, and keep track of, okay, your different suppliers, maybe different news sources that you want to check out on um, and then review your, your content and make sure that, okay, is anything now um, out of date? Do we need to update anything? So at Printful, um, this is one of the ways that we've had to pivot. Um, I mentioned early March, we published an FAQ um, where we gave information about COVID-19, what was going on. Um, and, you know, this was the, early, uh, the easiest and the fastest way for us to get this information out there. So it made sense initially. Um, and it was just a basically textual kind of piece of content and then with every update it would be like a newsfeed style or with every update we would post it and add that day's date so then you could scroll and then um, you know read back um, about all the previous in, um, updates. Um, this worked for a while because again it was easy it was fast but then you know as the more weeks went by the more updates we had to post um, it just turned into a really long block of text and we understood that this isn't this isn't efficient anymore um, especially for new customers who may be just signing up and they want to understand what's happening with Printful and COVID-19 um, you know they have to get through this giant essay to, to understand a basic summary so uh, we put in the time and the resources and we put together this um, dedicated COVID-19 landing page. So it's a lot easier to, to kind of skim and to understand what's happening. There's a section in the beginning that goes over a summary with the latest updates. Um, you know, there's a table with our current estimated fulfillment times. And then there's, you know, sections below that with specific categories and questions um, so that after you've read a summary, you can go to what interests you specifically. Um, and this is easier for us to maintain as well. Um, you know, like we also have a schedule where every other day we look at, um, you know, what are the latest fulfillment estimates that we update? Are there any new trending questions from customers that we're noticing that we need to update? Um, and then we maintain our page that way. So, um, you know, stay current with everything that's going on um, and, you know, adapt when you need to and stay true to your brand during all of this. So not everything that you publish has to tie back to COVID-19. Um, it's OK to return to your regularly program schedule, uh, scheduled programming, um, but just be sensitive to what's going on. So right now probably isn't the time to promote, you know, your top 10 cute summer festival looks because summer festivals are canceled. Um, instead, it might be a good idea to promote, um, you know, posters or tips on how to make your home a little cozier while you're spending so much time there. Um, you know, look at what's going on in the moment and figure out how you can um, get involved in a way that makes sense for your brand and that's going to be interesting for your audience. So that could be I mean, you know, like a daily kind of challenge campaign, like a daily fitness tip, a daily baking challenge or recipe. Um, you can publish, you know, weekly self-care tips, just anything that's going to make sense for your brand and that will engage your audience. So one thing that Printful did um, is we started our small, our small biz feature um, on our social media channels where we highlight some of our customers. And this works for us because right now, um, just a lot of people are talking about small businesses and how to support them. And we have the pleasure of working with a lot of customers who run small businesses. So this lets us be part of a topical conversation. Um, it lets us highlight some of our, you know, interesting, cool customers. Um, it's beneficial for these customers that we're highlighting because they get some exposure to our audience. And it's also inspirational for all of our other customers. You know, if you're just starting out, it's nice to see these examples of what other stores are doing, you know, it gives you something to aspire to um, and it kind of motivates you to get to where these other businesses are. Um, so think about what you can do for your brand, um, you know, what's happening in the world, what conversations are being had and, um, you know, how can you get involved? 
So um, those are my tips um, to sum up. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you communicate with your customers often. Uh, you know, you keep them in the loop about what's going on um, and share valuable and formative information that's going to be relevant for them while still, you know, maintaining a human aspect. Um, you also want to stay current, uh, you know, be ready to, to adapt when you need to, um, and at the same time, stay true to your brand. Um, and I'll just leave, I guess, with one final uh piece of advice um, is that COVID-19 is going to pass, um, but your business is going to stay. So the way you communicate now matters and the things you say and the things you do now, um, your customers are going to remember that when this is over. So, um, you know, make the most of it. Um, thank you. Um, I hope this was useful um, and informative. Um, that's you. it for me. That was very positive, actually. That was very nice to hear a lot of actionable, useful tips uh, for people to start using actually right away. But uh, one thing, recurring theme that I see in the comments, you know, coming in nevertheless is, you know, this idea of the slowdown. Like it is so overwhelming. Like it's all across the board in virtually all industries and it's like a chain reaction and obviously Printful has been slowing down a bit it's like you no know, hiding that and uh, mm -hmm. consequently our customers have, have have had to slow down a bit as well and it seems that well you can um, you know put all these practical tips to good use you can uh, inform people about delays you can um, you know I don't know do basically all the practical things that you just talked about but how to like cope with that mentally because I think that's like the biggest block of all it's just kind of hard to wrap your mind around all that's going on. What do you think? Uh, like how, how to cope with the slowdown, I guess? Yeah, like how to cope with the slowdown, how to accept the changes, you know, that you're writing on your, sir. oh, de delays and so and so. Like you can do all the practical stuff, but the mental pressure is still there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is there. It is hard. Um, I guess my main piece of advice is to um, you know, kind of put things into perspective and look at the bigger picture. Um, you know, this is things are slowing down everywhere. Even companies like Amazon are reporting that things are taking longer for them to deliver. Um, so, you know, you're not alone in this. You're not the only one dealing with the slowdown. It is happening industry wide across all industries, pretty much. So just remember that, you know, like it or not, this is kind of the new normal right now. Things are just slow. Um, so you know, do what you can with that um, and try to keep your head up and, and to keep moving forward. Yeah, that's all we can do, I guess. Keep moving yeah. forward. <laughs> okay, well, thank you once again. It was really useful, really insightful.